We're going to capture some oxygen to kind of prove that it's actually there. And you know what I want to use to capture the oxygen? You ready for this? Have you ever seen an oxygen trap? Hey, here we are again at Faraday Studios. I'm so glad you're here. You know, we got a lot of nice people. Yep, none of them are here though. No, well, what do you mean none of them are here? I'm here, I'm pretty nice most of the time. Mm-hmm. Now see, I, I have wizards in training and I think I got a sassy one with me today. You getting a little lippy. Me? Sassy? Never. It's your birthday, right? Yes. And you turn how old? 15. Oh God. Everybody out here that knows what happens when you're 15, about 14 or 15, they get sassy. Pretend like you're back with an ignorant 13-year-old in sweet and innocent. Remember that? Remember that? Okay, gotcha. In those days now, we're not the sassy 15. Oh my gosh, help us. Ah, I'm so glad you're here, by the way. I'm glad he's here. Happy birthday, by the way. That wizard handshake, I got him. <laughs> Do you know, I gave my first uh, science lecture when I was about your age. Huh. Really did? Yeah, I did. I started lecturing when I was about 15, 14, I guess it was. We're going to do something that's a classic uh, activity that demonstrates something important to us. So just think about air for a second. Take a deep breath. What did you just draw into your lungs? Air. Okay. And tell me what you know about air. Isn't it mostly nitrogen? Mm-hmm. What doesn't it have like helium and ozone and a bunch of other stuff too? Little bits. So what's the biggest part of air? Uh, nitrogen. Yeah, it's about, about 80%, 78 to 80% is nitrogen. And we breathe the nitrogen in, in, and, and, sp and spit it right back out. The nitrogen doesn't really do a whole lot with it. It just comes in and out. And what was the other one? Uh, oxygen. Oxygen, yeah. That's about 20% oxygen or so. But right out here in front of us is the air, and you can't see it. And if some scientist would say that's what it is, you say, well, can you prove any of that? What could you do just to demonstrate that there, yeah, there's oxygen in the air. Matter of fact, I am going to reach out and I'm going to grab the oxygen out of the air. Just to prove to you that there is oxygen there, I'm going to grab some of it. We're going to capture some oxygen to kind of prove that it's actually there. And you know what I want to use to capture the oxygen? You ready for this? Have you ever seen an oxygen trap? I have not. There's an oxygen trap right there. That is an oxygen trap, boy. It's like setting bait out there, you know, for to catch a rabbit or something. If I lay this in a certain spot, oxygen will come running. Here you go. Okay. What is this stuff? Steel wool. Steel wool. We use that in when they're sanding wood or, or polishing wood or something, furniture, fine things. Yeah. It's an abrasive and you can yeah, stuff like that. And what is steel? Uh, metal. Yeah. Is that one of the chemical elements? No. Okay, so what is steel? It's made up of metals. I don't remember. You don't remember what it has is. iron in it, right? It's mostly iron and a little bit of carbon. And boy, will this react with oxygen. Uh-huh. You ever see anything rust? Uh, yeah. And that's oxidizing, right? Mm -hmm. This will, under the right conditions, we can get this thing to really oxidize fast. So you got to get some steel wool. Okay. Steel wool pad. When you get it, sometimes it's got oil on it, you know, to keep it from rusting. Yeah. Just a fine cut. So what you do is just clean this with some... Uh, I think we used acetone or fingernail polish. You just just kind of clean it. So you see what I did? I took a jar. Mm-hmm. And what's in there? Steel wool. Steel wool, and it's kind of shoved down in there, right? Yeah. You see those little things right here? Yep. I, I used a glue gun to put glue those on there. You're going to need something, because we're going to turn this thing upside down in a bowl of water, and I wanted to leave a gap down there. You see the gap? Yep. Very so you small. can figure out a way to make your own gap. You could set it on some chopsticks or toothpicks or something to lift it up off the bottom of the pan that we're going to put it on. I'm going to have you pour just a little bit of water in there, just a little bit. We're kind of moistening the uh, steel wool. I'll just, I'll just pull this pan over here. We'll pull it in there. Before there, there. Oh, there. There's. I guess you saw that water, right? Yep. Now what's going to happen is this is going to start to rust, and it's going to start to pull oxygen out of the air, right? And you wouldn't notice it happening, would you? No. But if you put this in there, yeah, you're going to turn it upside down and just set that there. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to wait <sighs> for a while, and that oxygen that's in here is going to start to react, it's going to oxidize that iron. And sometimes it'll even start to turn brown. It takes a while. It might take a few hours. A few hours? Yeah. Well, I just want you to make note of where the water level is in there. It's about just, just a little bit lower than it is on the outside, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And as that oxygen, if it is in there, if yep. there's oxygen in there and it gets starts 
reacting with the, the, the iron, there's going to be fewer molecules floating around in there, right? It's going to make a little bit less pressure. So the atmospheric pressure out here is going to be, that's pushing down on that water right now. Yeah. We'll start to push that water back up in there. When temperature is held constant, P1V1 equals P2V2. So if the pressure decreases, the volume specifically of the water will increase. Did you understand at all what you were saying? Yeah. Okay, I got it. Pressure and volume. Yeah. I guess as the pressure decreases in here, mm -hmm. the volume will change because the pressure out here does not change. It doesn't lessen, but the pressure in there will lessen. So I want you to think about this. 20% of the gas in there is oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. If that 20% disappears. Then there'll be like an empty section like that big in it. Well, a section with no air in it. Like a vacuum? Yeah, like a vacuum. Heck yeah. So is that gonna suck the water up in there? I think it's the pressure out here that's gonna push the water up in there. Is that what you were trying to say? Yes. Okay. So if that's 20% oxygen in there and that 20% disappears, there's gonna be a 20% void in there, in there. And the pressure out here will be pushing this water down and up inside here. And how high up do you think it will go? Probably it'll fill the space with no air. Oh, he's getting it. He is getting it. Man, it's chugging in there. I hear it. It's getting hot. Whew, hot. So where would a fifth be on this level here at the bud jug? Probably like to there, I would about think. there. He's saying right about here. You see, you're saying the water level, your prediction would be we go up to about here mm -hmm. as the oxygen leaves? Yeah. Or gets attached there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Okay. Well, we'll just see how close you are. We're just going to leave this set in here. I don't know how long it's going to take. And some mystically, that water might raise up in there. But it would also demonstrate that there was oxygen. It would take that much to make us happy. Well, we'll come back later and see what it looks like, okay? Okay. All right. I'll see you up a bit. Let's go get some cookies. Yeah, it's, it's tragic. There we go. That's why I'm so big. It's all cookies. Wizards and cookies, they just can't help themselves. One eternity later. Check it out. Take a close look. He's literally taking a close look. Where did he do it? Where, where did it's it? definitely rusting. And it appears to be precisely at the one fifth. Oh, you don't know he precisely. It is. It went up, right? Yes, most yeah. definitely. Yeah, most definitely. And so qualitatively, yeah, something happened. And what's amazing is, is that, you know, that water that lifted there, it isn't real heavy, but that's you know, a significant amount of weight that some magically got pushed up. Somebody lifted it up because there's less gas in there now. And this is something you can do at home. It's very reliable. And the trick, of course, is to clean the, any cheese or oil or grease that's on there. And sometimes you take the steel wool and dip it in a little uh, oh, acetone or a fingernail polish remover or something, and that will pull off any of the oils or grease that they put on there. And just shove it in a jar, turn it upside down in some water, and leave a little gap down there some way so the water can go. And we just demonstrated that there indeed is... Oxygen in there. Or, yeah, at the time they didn't know it was oxygen, but they said there's another gas. And either the gas dissolved in the water or it reacted with this. And I think the indicator is, I think that's gonna get rustier and rustier as time goes on. Get, mm -hmm. Seems logical. Yeah, up to a point, run out of oxygen, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think's gonna happen when you lift the jar? What's gonna happen? Tell me, come on. What's gonna uh, happen? It'll What's probably happen? start slowly leaking out. Yeah. And then when I finish picking it up and all of it will come out. But what if that oxygen releases and all of a sudden it might explode? I don't know. We're gonna lift it up. Ready? Three, two, one, lift it. See what happens. Where's it go? Where's it go? Oh, here it comes. Oh, oh my God. Oh, lift it up out of the water. And in, and, and. And, and, okay, that's it. <sighs> that was kind of cool though, because it didn't like, it all stayed the same until I completely lifted it out. Go figure, man. It's one of those things. Well, thanks for joining us here at Midnight Science Club. Hope you enjoyed it and you're always welcome here. We're, we've got, I don't know, in the tens of thousands of activities in our library here that's been collected for 200 and almost 230 years now. And we're glad to share these with everybody around the planet. And you know, we've got people watching the Philippines, India, Japan. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Yeah. People, people around the world. So you know there's gonna be a run on steel wool now. Probably won't be able to find it for a long time. Yeah, probably better go start my hoard before this video yeah, start comes this, out. Yeah, yeah, before that video gets out, better hoard up your steel wool because you're gonna to wanna to try this. You know, your kid turns 15 and he's turned into a smart aleck, but it's good, it's healthy. Congratulations on your birthday. Hey.
You got it, man. Good for you. Say goodbye to everybody. And goodbye. Thanks for joining us at Midnight Science Club here at Faraday Studio. I'm Jake Wizard 4, and this is Elliot. Elliot. Wizard in training. Deluxe, because he just turned 15. He's no longer a wizard in training. He's a wizard in training. Deluxe. How does that feel? Quite an upgrade. It is.